The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. Up next on The Believer's Walk of Faith. You might have made some mistakes in your life, but if you just listen to the Spirit, it's saying this, recalculating, 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 because we're going to get you to the promised land. We're going to get you to everything God has for you and has planned for you if you'll just hang in there and don't get discouraged. But no, things happen to you. God has forgiven you. Things will open up for you. People will come to you, and your day is nigh at hand. God is going to bring you into your promised land. Matter of fact, this might be your year. First, I got to make sure that I know it's a mandate, that I, this is not an option for me to take, take it all back. This is a mandate for me. And God thought of it. I didn't think of it. And the next thing you know is I've got to not be dependent upon a failing system. I got to come out of that thing. Say amen to that. And that, and God has made it so that you can come out. Am I right about it? This is 4D clinic. Let me call it like this, a 4D workshop. All right. So look at God with Moses. He tells Moses, look up, put it on the screen, please. Numbers chapter 20 and verse eight. He tells Moses this, watch this, 4D workshop. Watch this. Ready? Read. Take the rod and gather the rock and assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes. Oh, but wait a minute, wait a minute. Speak, see, you, 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 you might have missed that. Speak to the rock. In front of them. This is a workshop now. Are you following what I'm saying? I don't want you to speak it over here while they're not looking. I want you to see, speak it to them so they can see this. Because this is a workshop. Mark chapter 11, verse 14. And Jesus answered and said unto him, No man. Why did the Holy Ghost write and his disciples heard it? Why did they write and the disciples heard it? He didn't need to write that. Why did he write and the disciples? Why didn't he say and the disciples overheard it? Why didn't he, why did he say the disciples heard it? Because we're in the workshop. We want you to hear it. We want you to know what it takes to get a miracle in your life. Say 4D, 4D. Workshop. workshop. And I'm telling you right now, God's about to use you yes. to be an instructor yes. in the 4D workshop. Yes. Glory to God, man. That came out of the spirit. Amen. 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 All right, so when we look at this, we can just go on and on because here is Jesus and he did it. And then he told them over in Matthew's gospel, chapter 10, verse seven and eight, he said, all right, I want you to go and I want you to go two by two and I want you to heal the sick. I want you to deliver the oppressed. I want you to cast out devils or I want you to raise the dead. And he said, freely you've received, freely give. Watch this. Don't take no money. Don't take a change of underwear. He told them all of that. All of that's in there. You see, he had taken them to a workshop. Now it's time for them to be mobilized. It's time for them to get up out that church chair and go out there and do something for God. Say amen to that. All right. Now, 4D workshop. Uh, let me just take you to a couple of things uh, that happened to me. So we are going to get our first home. We're in Minnesota. We're both with IBM. Going to get our first home. We're in an apartment. And I said, let's go around and look at some houses. And a dear Christian brother who was a realtor took it around, took us some houses. And we came back a night. And I said, baby, which one do you like? She said, no, you mean which one 
uh, can we afford? I said, no, God told me to ask you, which one do you like? She said, well, I like that, not the white one up on the hill there in that circular driveway. I like that one right there. I said, let's get down and pray. So we got down and prayed. And then after I finished, we, we got down there. As soon as I got down, God said, get your wife, get up and go over there and point at the house. Whoa, here comes a workshop. I want, I want you to get up, go over there in that neighborhood this time of night, and I want you to point, let me go over this group, over there in that neighborhood this time of night, and I want you to point at that house. Notice, he didn't tell me anything that was logical. He told me something that only he could do. He, he wants to get me out of the logic place and get me over into faith. What do you think we did? I got my wife, we went over there, we both took our finger, uh, put a little moisture on it, say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we command you to sell to us now in Jesus' name. And when I said that, we said that, things start happening. All of a sudden, my boss called me and, hey, Bill, we got a contest for the managers. I said, oh, that's great. I said, what do we get? He said, $15,000, $20,000, whatever it was. I said, well, praise God. I said, I need that. He said, you already won. I said, well, praise God. See, it's on a level that a fallen man can't reach. Say amen. All you got to do is hear and obey in 4D. That's all you got to do. Say amen to that. And so that's a house. And then next thing you know, uh, what else do we do, baby? Uh, yeah, you, you, you name it. I mean, we did, how about her job? Down at ORU, I'm in full-time school. She said, I need employment. And I said, okay, let's pray. She went and we prayed and we, God said, tell her to specify the kind of job she wanted. She wanted uh, 10 minutes from the house, wanted in computers, so forth and so on. Did all of that. And we then prayed, believe we received it. Now you got to hold on to your faith. And we're holding on to our faith. And next thing you know, here come mother, Brother Backus, come over to see me. Hey, Brother uh, Sister Veronica, is Bill in the house? Yeah, he's in the house. Uh, you got your job yet? Yes, I do. Where is it? I don't know, but I got it. See, a lot of people won't do that. They'll do it in the house, but they won't do it publicly. You got to take Jesus public. If you won't walk in 4D, you won't take Jesus. I guarantee you. Well, not only that, uh, what else did we get, baby? Uh, we got what? Airplane. How about airplane? And I'm telling you, in that airplane deal, I, I said, Lord, this is what I want. I, I was looking on the on, online and it says, you know, you can design the kind of airplane you want. And I started doing that. I said, wait a minute. I don't know how this is going to look. Plus the fact, this takes too much thought time. I said, I'm going to just get a picture of it. So I got a picture of it and God, that's the picture. That's the picture I found. So I got that picture. I said, Lord, this is what I want. Claimed it. This is what I want. Watch what I said. If you go out to Midway, that looks just like that right there. That airplane came to me from California. I'm saying, what do you want? It's time now to name it and claim it. Sit down. So I could go on and on, folks. This thing works. Yes, it works now. So what am I saying? What about you? Because I said something. I said, okay, I want you to do something. I want you to take your bills and put them on a the table. Didn't I say that? It doesn't even have to be your table. Put it on your cousin's table. Put it on somebody's table. I didn't say put them on the floor, did I? I didn't say put it on the couch, did I? See, you got to follow instructions and you put it on the table. When you put it on the table, then take them and shuffle them up like you, you know what I'm saying? With all them bills you got, just shuffle them up and then back off of it, I said two or three paces and then point at it. I didn't say speak to it without pointing at it. I told you to point at them bills. Say amen. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm getting reports. My bills got canceled. I'm getting 
reports. And some people here thought I was just preaching and not telling the truth. This is the way I got my bills paid off. I'm saying you can be debt free by Christmas Day. You don't need another lesson in 4D. You got all you need right now. You take them bills at home and put them on that table and you start pointing at them bills. Say, Bills, I'm talking to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command you be paid off, disappear, dematerialize in the name of Jesus. Did Jesus point out a fig tree? Did he speak to a fig tree? Did he speak to a storm? Did he speak to a dead man? Did he say what he did you can do too? You see, technically in heaven, your debts have already been paid. Glory to God. Jesus paid the debt. Boy, I'm preaching to somebody now. I don't know who I'm preaching to. And the disciples heard it. Can't you see? He's in a clinic. There's a workshop he got going on. The last part. This is KMS, Kingdom Management System. In flying airplanes years ago, um, I used to learn to fly, you know, small propeller driven airplanes. And I had a map and it's a, um, a visual map that you use when you have to look over the ground and all your fixes or the VORs and stuff in here. I learned that way. And then when I went in the military, I started at that same light airplane. And uh, they had something called an E6B. And this was kind of a computer in a way. But in it, it had this thing that rotates. Why? because you had to calculate everything. You had to calculate basically um, how long it would take you to take off, okay? Um, you had to, uh, how, much, how mu- much runway you need. Um, calculate the winds coming and the direction of winds and what heading you're gonna have to hold to get from point A to point B and so forth. That's where it used to be. And with technology, they now have something called a flight management system. Now, you can imagine what it does. It just took a lot of work from the pilot and put it in a system of the airplane. And so now, simply, you could just put in your destination and all kinds of things start happening. The flight management system will either even calculate the weight of the airplane based on how many passengers you have. Why? Because that's going to have something to do with how far you got to go down the runway with the weight to take off. But all that's calculated. You can put in your destination and then you could take the airplane's autopilot and hook it in. And now you got winds coming and when you get up 35, 40,000 feet, some of those winds are 90, degree, 90 miles an hour wind and they could easily push you off course. But with a flight management system, it makes small corrections all the way to California and you don't even notice it. So, Joseph had a dream. And that's found over in uh, 
Genesis in chapter 37, verse 4 and 5, or 5. And he told his brothers about it. Brothers got upset. Now this dream came to him again. And this time he told his brothers and his dad. His dad heard about it. Now understand, when the dream came in the second time, his belief system was such that it was programmed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all of a sudden now, he's got his destiny programmed. Are you with me? That's good. Yes, yes, yes. So now, what he has to do is just by faith follow directions. Just follow what's input because it, it, it's, it's going to turn him. When he comes into a situation, uh, this, this system knows how to get him out of it and put him back on course. 4D. You got what I'm saying? And that's why 4D is so dangerous because you put your destiny in here. One man said it like this, start with the end in mind. So it's in here. And because you're in 4D, you can't be stopped. So it guarantees your arrival. Somebody say amen here. So once you take this word and you plug it in there, then the system takes over and takes all the work off of you. And the system knows what to do to get to to where you want to go. Are y'all with me here? See, but you, you got to plug it in. You, you got to believe you receive when you pray. And once it's in there, things are going to start happening. Now with Joseph, he told his dad, his dad said, Joe, why are you doing this? He said, stop telling people that. So now God's got to deliver Joe from where he is to have him reach his destiny. Because where he is, is a toxic environment. And he's got to get him out of there. So the system is still calculating now. GPS, you get off course, you make the wrong turn, it'll say recalculating, recalculating. Same thing about this. You make the wrong turn, recalculating, because God promised you. You follow what I'm saying? And I'm saying you might have made some mistakes in your life, but if you just listen to the Spirit, it's saying this, recalculating, 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 because we're going to get you to the promised land. We're going to get you to everything God has for you and has planned for you if you'll just hang in there and don't get discouraged. But no, things happen to you. God has forgiven you. Things will open up for you. People will come to you and your day is not at hand. God is going to bring you into your promised land. Matter of fact, this might be your year. Not only are you going to get the debts paid off, but you're going to have a million dollars in the bank. Recalculating. Sit down. I know you made a wrong turn. And that's what happens to us sometimes. We're far off course. Here's Joseph in jail. In jail. But he kept the faith. Recalculating. Yeah. 
Even the butcher and the baker and them, whoever offended the king came down there and one of them got killed. He told the other one, he's going to be raised back up to the king. He said, now when you get to the king, tell him I'm down here. I mean, you know, that, please help me out. Tell him I'm down here. He got up there and forgot about it. Recalculating. If they let you down, recalculating. Come on, if you didn't get that when you thought you should, because it's recalculating. If you even go past your waypoint, he's going to bring you back to where you're supposed to be. Because he's recalculating, man. He's going to bring you to this promised land. You're going to get to the promised land. I don't care what it looks like. God's got plans for you, and he didn't change his plan. Your miracle is on its way. What am I saying? Take your seats, please. No, no. You can use this in starting a business. You can use this any kind of way. God's got big plans for you. That's why you're getting big dreams. Don't, don't cancel them. Don't think that didn't happen. Don't think it won't happen. Well, I'm getting too old. Well, I'm now sick right now. So don't recalculate it. Did he that started a good work in you will complete it. But right now, he's recalculating. Glory to God. Well, I want to say that this kingdom management system, that you set the coordinates and then let the system take over. Jesus set some coordinates in Mark, Mark chapter 10 and verse 34. I want you to see what he said as he set these coordinates. Ready? Read. They shall mock him and shall scourge him and shall spit upon him and shall kill him. And the third day he shall rise again. Nothing can stop it. Nothing can stop it. You get that in your heart and you believe it? Yes. Your spirit takes over. Mm. More powerful than your mind. Yes. Nothing can stop your spirit. You keep your mouth right. Yes. Even though Job was in such disrepair, it says that his friends looked at him in Job chapter 2 and Verse 12, and couldn't even recognize he was a man. But he said something over in verse chapter 13. He said, though he slay me. Come on, what am I going to do? I'm going to trust him. You just got to keep trusting. I know you can't trace it, but just trust it. You're going where probably nobody has gone before but you were chosen and he's not going to let you go. He said, you didn't choose me. I chose you. I knew you before you got to your mother's womb. Now, you're going to trust him. And next thing you know, Job in chapter 42, Bible says God gave back to him twice as much as he had before. Gave him a whole new family. Watch his Job in perfect health. Everything. Kingdom management system. Praise God. I trust that you enjoy that. Now, this is a new concept here. This is to all the kingdom management system. Now this is, once you get born again, this system is placed inside of you. Now this system is a producer and it does a lot of the work for you. You know, like you can be in a car and you're trying to find 
a certain residence or, or a certain part of town and, and you set your GPS or whatever have you and it'll guide you there. It'll tell you what streets to turn on and so forth. Well, the same thing in flying. If you have a flight management system, you can set it all in Chicago if you're going to L.A. And, and it'll guide you to L.A., accounting for the winds and everything. You have a kingdom management system inside of you. It's a guidance system. It knows where you are to, to go to get to the destination that you've set in. And you can set in a destination. You start with the end in mind. And you put this end in mind, speak it out of your mouth, and here's the system it takes over. It's a powerful thing. That's what happened with Joseph when he had the dream. He started with the end in mind. The next thing you know, it took him all the way down to Egypt and he fulfilled the dream. Oh yeah, he had to go through being a slave at Potiphar's and maybe a time, some time in prison and so forth, but he ended up at his destination. And I'm saying right now, if you confess your words and speak your destiny, this management system will take over and bring you to that destiny. It is a powerful thing. That's why you have to always speak what is good. Not ever, don't speak things that are bad. Speak things that are good so you'll always win. It is a powerful teaching. Get it. You will enjoy it. Well, this is Bill Winston saying we'll see you next time. Until then, keep walking by faith. Today's power-packed teaching, Take It All Back, is available in its entirety. To order this three-part series on CD or MP3, on DVD or MP4, contact us at 1-800-711-9327 or online at billwinston.org. The God Kind of Faith is the faith that takes and not the faith that waits. We as believers are to do wondrous things that are impossible for the world to match. Our portion of this earth is to dominate and reclaim what the devil has stolen, destroyed, hindered, and held up from its rightful owners. It's time to take it all back. I've got a question for you. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Now, somebody asked me that one time. I said, I don't know, you know. Well, here's the deal. He came and gave his life for all humanity. Why? So that all our sins be forgiven and that we can be in a family of God from now on. That's what happened to me. And when I prayed the prayer of faith, I knew something had taken place. My whole life had changed. I want to get you to pray that same prayer. It only takes a moment. Just say this, Dear Lord, come into my heart. I believe in you that you died for my sins and you're alive right now. Now, Lord, thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, you said it from your heart, a miracle just took place. You are now with the family of God. I want to send you a book. It's called Born Again in Spirit Film. It's a book that tells you what the next steps are, free of charge. Welcome to the family of God and keep walking by faith. Now remember, you need faith to get to your destiny. So don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our videos. This is Bill Winston. I love you and keep walking by faith.